Now, your hosts, Mike Jarek and Juliet Huddy. Welcome back. Our next guest is a matchmaker who has sent more than 200 couples to their, no, down the oh. aisle. 200 oh. couples down Please. the aisle. In just a few moments, she will reveal how you can find your perfect match. But first, we're going to see why they call her the Robin Hood of matchmaking. <laughs> Her parties are the toast of the town. San Francisco single soirees intended to set up lonely hearts. What my role is, is I drag people across the room or uh, find a special someone uh, and I bring them together. But Perry Livermore is not just a matchmaker. She's a philanthropist. Ticket moolah from her shindigs go to charity. She keeps none of the money herself. My real love was nonprofit organizations and matching people. So I thought, why not marry the two? I can have these wonderful parties and, and introduce people, but then I can also raise money for charity. Perry started as a teen, setting up her fellow students. I sort of went from the kid to ridicule to the go-to gal for having a date or meeting people. And I thought, this is amazing. So when I got beyond high school, I knew I had to keep doing it. And she's pretty darn good. I have introduced 220 couples that have gotten married. If that wasn't enough, her love links have raised close to $3 million for charity. We have done so much as a group to help these organizations. But when you also compound it with helping people meet one another and helping people find love, it's really a beautiful thing. I feel like I'm on the side of the angels. <laughs> Please welcome Gretchen and Hal Wendell, a happily married couple who met uh, through Perry Livermore. And yeah. also author of How to Marry Fabulous Man, Perry Livermore, the star of the segment. We're going to talk to you in just a second, but good to have you guys here. So how did you, how did you meet Perry? I met Perry as a reporter on Perry's show, Everyday Angels. And so Perry and I met, and then Hal met Perry at one of the uh, charity yeah, I, I went to a red and white ball event in San Francisco, and I heard it was a charity that gave money, you know, for, you know, for charities. Plus, sure. you bet, you know, got to meet people. It's so like it was sort a of a win-win. It was a singles type of deal, and the money went to charities. So uh, that was attracted to me, and uh, I met Perry at the red and white ball. I oh yeah. yeah, perfect for Gretchen. Yeah, you did. Oh, you saw that yeah, match right away. Right, and then there was a party, and Perry said, "You have to go to this party. You have to meet this this great guy." And I'm like, she said, "He's tall. He has brown hair, and he likes tennis." And I'm thinking, "Oh, geez, how am I going to find?" So I went to this party. And it was in Moran. It was a charity party. A pool party? A pool, a pool party. party. Oh. It was a pool party. Oh, shoot. Yes. And um, Perry apparently had told Hal all about me. So, um, and I saw Hal across the pool, and I thought immediately that I was, you know, attracted to him. He was very, um, you know, I was attracted to so him. So Perry Hal, knew what she was doing. Perry knew what she was doing. And Hal said that I was uh, peeling his clothes off with my eyes. Whoa. <laughs> it was the poor, yeah. Yeah. Really? The, the poor girl. Hockey there, aren't you, Hal? The poor girl was standing there at the far end of the pool, <laughs> just staring at me, and I had to, I had to put her out of her misery. Yeah. I, walked, sure. I, I walked over there and yeah. introduced my, is, yeah. myself. She so was drunk you. on you. It was she, was she was just drunk. Well. That's right. It was over the top. So did you go out right away, start dating? We did. Yeah, thanks to Perry introducing. We did. We. Um, we went on a date probably about a week later. He tracked me down through Perry, got my number, and called me. And um, well, We chatted at the pool party for about two hours, and yeah. there was oh, clearly chemistry but, there. But how did you know that there, was chemi that there would be chemistry between these people? Because you do have a pretty good success rate. Yes, one of the things I thought was interesting is, of course, he was the type that Gretchen liked. She had told me about what she liked, even though she didn't like to go on the blind dates. But also, Hal has, is from a family, a really interesting family. He has an art background and a music background. And Gretchen wanted to learn more about it and knew something about it and so I thought well that's a nice couple and he's also a really terrific guy but then you we said you're married yes how soon did that happen well that's a whole nother story <laughs> would you like to hear that? so we dated for um, a year and yeah. in the beginning we talked and I said I think a year's enough time to date someone I think at, at, after a year you know and he said oh yeah you know this is right in the, right in the beginning right and we never talked about it again so we dated the first six months we still dated other people and then about in, in about six months we were um, exclusive and I would do nice things for him I would cook dinner maybe once a week all the, all the all, while all getting coached by Perry. Perry would, yeah, Perry well, would and coach she was me. telling you to do what oh she told me to 
like the things in her book. She said, take a picture of the two of you or a nice picture of you and put it in this house. So I you know, did that. I think it was Valentine's Day. What does that Day. do? What, well, why is that well, sort effective? of marks your territory. Oh, you? yeah. <laughs> you can bring the ladies home, other ladies that's, home. That's so right. I get the idea. You were cooking for him, kind of doing his laundry. Every night. So you're trying to become indispensable. Trying to become indispensable, You were yes. basically playing the role of wife. Yes. Without play, without being annoyed. Right, and I was in love with him. I mean, I loved him. He was wonderful. Well, so it, it was, worked. He, it worked. So at the end of the year, Mr. Hal came to me and I said, oh, our year anniversary our is coming anniversary. up. And I told Perry, I said, Perry, what am I going to do? I don't think he's going to have a ring. She what said, did he give you? And well, well, Perry told me, coached me, right? <laughs> she said, you need to use the velvet hammer, which is a, which is in her book. And um, she said, well, this is what happened. So Hal came to me and um, he said, here's these nice pearls. Oh. And I said, ah. Oh, I said, that's wonderful, it's Hal. Beautiful, nice. It's beautiful, but I really, and it was very hard for what me to do. What did you want at a pearl? Well, I said, Hal, I, would, I really want an engagement ring. Okay, so you basically yeah. gave him the ultimatum. We're going to mm -hmm. find out. Well, we know what happened. They got married. But Bam. we'll see exactly <laughs> what happened right after that. Oh, Hal, after you this. caved right away. The velvet hammer. <laughs> We're back with Gretchen and Hal. They are a happy, ma happily married couple who met through our other guest, matchmaker yeah. Perry Livermore, the Robin Hood of matchmaking. You know, and Perry says that you need to, if you want to find a man, you need to treat this search like a job. Explain that. Well, that's really true. A lot of women spend more time looking for a job than they do for a husband. Mm -hmm. And they don't go about looking for a husband in the right way. Some man comes along that looks good to them and they think, oh, great, I'm in love. But they don't ask the right questions. Huh. They don't really spend the time to hold themselves back before they get involved. They're and in they love with six, love. Exactly. Oh, don't I know that. <laughs> and they <laughs> wait six months, Sister. a year, two years. And you have to really know what you want, ask the right questions, and think of it as job. Every day you should do something that leads you to finding the right man. You know, us guys, Hal, probably back me up on this. We do have egos, big ones. Mm -hmm. And so is the idea just to stroke our ego? I think that you should find the good and praise it. Alex Haley said that. But I think you need, one of the things the man is looking for, it's not so much how much you love him, but how you make him feel when you're with him. Mm. And I think a man likes to feel, if he, if he knows that you're, really uh, into him that you, you're really making him feel good then he'll want to be with you more and more uh, a guy guys always say if you're that they're they're happy when you're happy mm -hmm. they want a happy woman. i think the point of them saying that is that they, they they don't want you nagging them all the time they want you to feel like they want to feel like they're making you happy that's exactly right and we all have baggage don't bring yours uh make sure that you talk about that's exactly right you have hit the nail on the head i hear that from men all the time it's very important that a woman should be happy because a man has so many things going on in his life. We all do. You don't want to have all the baggage. I don't know, Perry, but you say in the book, yeah. uh, don't lie, but don't tell him everything. Well, that's you not don't lying. Have to. That's not? <laughs> no, just not telling him everything. Yes, it, it may be a lie of omission, but why is it every person you meet, you don't say, hey, you know, I had 15 parking tickets in the last month. Why do you have to mention So if that? we were dating, Perry, and I ask you, how many partners have you had in your life, what would you say to me? If, if you're dating, I would say, you know, I've been with a few men a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you're saying, <laughs> you're saying keep a little mystery. mystery? Always right. leave them wanting for more. That's right. That's, That's very right. good, Juliet. I'm, I'm sure you're very uh, successful. <laughs> okay, do, do this. We talk about this all the time. You're out on a date. Yes. For fairly early on in the relationship, in the first six months, do you say, I want a baby? Do you? Yeah. At the, you? Now, I disagree with that, Julia. I think if you tell a man right away that you want a baby and you want to get married, they will leave skid marks. You, uh, they will run like rabbits. Don't tell them that right away. And also, I think a lot of men think, well, she doesn't really want me. She wants a sperm bank. She wants a husband. But you want to tell them that later on, if that's your feelings. But so many men tell me, and I listen to men every day, they tell me the same things over and over again, and I put it in the book, but they tell me that really is off-putting to them, especially if a woman, if a woman's in her 20s, that's one thing. Sure. If a woman's in her 30s, you say, oh my goodness, well, she must, uh, she doesn't have that much time. Again, We're tell on me about the fast it. track. Yep. You've got great tips, i got to tell you. Here, uh, here's I apologize, the thing, man. We, we want to talk to you as well in the green room. Uh, we can look at uh, some more tips on the website, including yeah. what if you are having a hard time just meeting a man? You've got great tips. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And you'll get them at mnjshow.com. Gretchen, Mal, thank you. More of your story, too. All right, come